Hi everyone, welcome to another video. I decided to make this video because I've noticed a problem in the workplace. The problem that I see is that I think we're expecting and demanding our employer to respond to large scale social issues by declaring the employer an ally or um, standing against whether it be racism, Islamophobia, anti-Semitism, or any other type of discrimination that's happening in our society. Now the problem that I see with this is that by and large, office culture and most all workplaces across the West, again, I would say, are filled with progressively minded individuals, people who already are not racist, are not Islamophobic, do not wish harm on any group on the basis of their group identity. When we start bringing in uh, social issues into the workplace and start signing people up mandatory anti-racism sessions, mandatory anti-Semitism or Islamophobia sessions, certainly a percentage of the group will learn new things, but the vast majority already believe what's being brought into the workplace? What's the problem with signing people out for anti-racism sessions or Islamophobia sessions or, or learning about crimes that people have committed towards the LGBTQ community? There's a couple problems with this. One is that often these conversations are made to be thought of as building awareness, but also provide a more heavy handed approach. That if you don't do certain things, you know, if you don't include certain language in your email signature, if you don't include certain ways of addressing each other, that somehow you're working against those groups. You're not inclusive enough. You're lacking an inclusion lens as an example. You are thought of as not totally progressive. And again, that is a really bold statement to make amongst progressive minded individuals already. People either accept that and say, you know what, I'm working and this is a journey, or, and this is much more dangerous, they start retrenching and saying, well, why am I learning all, all this stuff about Islamophobia? I'm not Islamophobic. You know, I don't wanna partake in that. In fact, I think this is ridiculous. I'm not this person. They might ask why they're learning about specific groups and not other groups that they themselves are a part of. And so when pe once people, once that resentment starts building in, in people, they start questioning things more openly. They start willingly kind of disassociating with the progressive discussions. They start, they stop commenting. They stop engaging. They stop being part of the social fabric of the workplace. In fact, they may actually contribute to less teamwork. They may say to themselves, I'm just here for a paycheck. I don't want to be part of anything this organization does. I don't want to include anything in my signature. Now, I know I'm not a behavioralist at all. I'm not a psychologist, but I can see this having a negative effect on many people over many years. They may actually contribute to a more negative environment in the workplace because they're just not engaging in what their workplace is telling them to engage. And you know, people learn things in different ways. And there are many studies that show that, you know, some anti-racism courses just have had no effect, if at all, on changing people's perceptions and behaviors and stereotypes that they have towards certain groups. The second issue that I see with bringing social issues into the workplace is I'm not too clear about what the vision is or the goal is amongst progressively minded individuals on where we're going. So it's one thing to build awareness about discrimination and harassment that groups have faced as a result of their group identity, but where this takes us, other than awareness, I'm not too clear about. And that lack of understanding what the goalpost is, I think poses another problem for many employees who again are all already progressively minded and are already denouncing uh, issues of racism and discrimination of any kind. If we're going to bring this into the workplace, we, we have to understand where this is all leading to. What's the plan? What's the goal? What's the end point that we want to reach? The third problem I will say is that social issues are very heavy on our minds and it may in fact take us away from being productive in our jobs. It's hard to jump into an anti-racism conversation and then jump back into our work. There is merit in bringing in some social issues into the workplace as it relates to the workplace. So for example, if uh, people feel that they're being discriminated against in the hiring practices, I think that's a, a reasonable thing to bring up in the workplace, but it needs to be specific about what that discrimination is and how it manifested 
and also what we can do to move the yardstick forward. If people are feeling that their employer is not accommodating, perhaps to the needs of their religion, having frank and open conversations with management can be another way of, again, engaging. And I say these things because we work in relatively progressive, open-minded environments, generally speaking. So I can't see management not open to that all the time. Another idea is making anti-racism or you know courses on discrimination and harassment optional. Instead of mandating them across the entire network of employees at an organization, perhaps we allow employees to make that part of their performance plans to ensure that you know that's something that they want to pursue themselves. These are some ideas I think we can kind of curtail bringing social issues into the workplace. Issues are very heavy, they're very they can be very daunting on individuals and people can become very resentful in learning about them. But let me know what you think. Do you think that we should continue bringing social issues into the workplace? Let me know in the comment section below. As always, like, subscribe, and check out my podcast called Open Minds with your host, Christopher Balkrin. Thanks so much, take care, and I'll catch you in the next one.